I speak to you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. I, uh, I would like to bring you a word today on our Old Testament reading, uh, this reading from 2 Samuel. Uh, if you are a fan of King David and you have followed him through 1 and 2 Samuel, you'll know that uh, 2 Samuel up to this point is pretty bleak. Uh, we have uh, Saul's death at the end of 1 Samuel, and uh, the, the first five chapters of, of 2 Samuel are all about uh, the warring between Saul's um, loyal uh, contingent and family members that are left and, and David, who, is, who has been made king uh, over all of Israel. And there's these, this infighting that's going on between these, these people groups. And, um, and David comes out victorious. And in chapter six, we see uh, David uh, moving the, his, his city uh, into his, his whole reign into uh, the city of David or, or Jerusalem. That's what we're gonna call it now. The city of David, of course, now is known as Bethlehem, but he, he, he's taken over and he's moved into, into um, Jerusalem, and he wants to bring the Ark of the Covenant into Jerusalem so it can bless the people of Israel. Um, uh, and, and natural, natural that he would want to do that. The Ark of the Covenant um, is a is a sign of God's presence with with God's people. And uh, you know, for us, we don't know. Uh, we we know what we what the Bible tells us about the Ark of the Covenant. We know that it's it's a box. That's, um, that has a particular measurement and it has two cast uh, cherubim uh, with their wings extended towards each other um, in, in, a, in a symbol of, of, uh, of a mercy seat is what it, what it creates and uh, with two long uh, stanchion poles for it to be carried, those are attached to the Ark of the Covenant and um, it's moved uh, from uh, its, its place where it has been during King Saul's reign, to uh, to where David is going to be, and it's it's moved in a way that is really entertaining, uh, with David uh, dancing in front, and the people dancing in front of the ark as it as it goes from from one city uh, to another, and and really we see the culmination of David's um, uh, elated dance when it comes into Jerusalem, as he is really. Uh, uh, you know, dancing up a storm uh, in in celebration that 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 God's presence um, in you know manifest in this ark is has come into into the city of David so uh, or, or Jerusalem and uh, it can bless the people. Uh, I guess for for me that I, I have to ask the question: uh, What is our ark of the covenant today? What is what is our sign, our 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 symbol, our sign? That, that God is, is with us. I'm, I can't answer this for you. Uh, you'll need to answer that question for yourself. Where is God visibly present for you today? Um, for me, I, I work in a beautiful church. I have been blessed to work in beautiful churches um, uh, all over uh, in Tennessee and in, and in Texas. And I can tell you uh, that, it ha that God has, has, has uh, uh, been visible to me uh, probably most apparently um, in the altar and and the tabernacle that resides where where, where the uh, body and blood resides behind Jesus uh, resides behind the altar those are for me have been ever since I came into the church uh, the the most visible sign of God's presence with us our, our tabernacle uh, is, is a callback all the way back to the Israelites uh, uh, being led through the desert and uh, Moses being instructed to set up a tabernacle in the form of a tent uh, so the people could worship God and God could reside there. And, and for me, that, that tabernacle is where God, uh, God's presence is, um, is, is made a relevant and apparent to me. I, you'll have to answer that question for yourself. But I think it's a question worth asking. Where is God present for, for you today? Um, is it in our beautiful church space? If you're a member of St. James, you've been here, uh, you've seen throughout 
our online services, uh, Sam has given us these beautiful shots of all these windows. You've seen every stained glass window uh, in here. Uh, is it in the stained glass? Is it in, um, is it in uh, the, the, the pomp and the pageantry that is our service? Um, is it uh, in uh, the word uh, proclaimed from either the lectern or the pulpit? Uh, where, where is it? Where, where is God's? Or is it even in the church building itself? Is it, is it out in, in, uh, in nature in the form of, you know, a mountain or, or a, a beam of light? You know, I, I can't answer that for you. I, all I can say is it's, it's worth exploring. And once we find um, God uh, present with us, uh, boy, if we could capture even a portion of the joy and, um, and, and, uh, and celebration that David shows us in this passage today, wouldn't that be wonderful? I know that I am moved sometimes to tears when I hear our choir uh, do a, uh, a moving rendition of, of, a, of a hymn or, a, or a, uh, anything uh, that, that, uh, that is done with such excellence. Um, I, I am moved sometimes to tears uh, through a baptism or through uh, a, a burial rite, uh, a, a wedding, or even through our Eucharistic service. There's just so many times where um, I can feel God kind of brush up against against me, and, and I know that God is, is present. We need that today. In this, in this uh, kind of count, uh, cancel culture environment, I think we need to know that we can't cancel God. God will not allow us to take him out of the equation. God is God and our creator, our sustainer, our redeemer, and we're not. And so no matter what is said, what is done, what is offered in the form of a retort or trying to cancel out uh, your faith, know that God is not moved by that. God is not moved, not a single inch, and that God's um, presence is made manifest um, in so many ways to so many people, uh, whether it be prayer, reading the Bible, Scripture, whether hearing music um, uh, that, that is inspiring you to think about God, whatever that is. The, the, the warning in all of this is uh, we need to be careful as humans because we have a tendency to take something and elevate it um, to the point of, of, of worship. And so we can't take, for example, we can't take the Bible and elevate it to the point of worship because what it's meant to do is point through itself to God. And so everything that, that, is, um, that is in our worship space, including this beautiful cross that's up above uh, the altar, the tabernacle, the altar rail, these beautiful uh, new kneelers that we have that you can see behind me, uh, all these are not meant to be worshiped. They're meant to elevate our worship, to elevate us, to, to make us um, uh, look through them towards God so we can see God through these things. Where does God reside? Well, God resides uh, in all of God's creation, including God's greatest creation, uh, humankind. And you, you can't take God out of that. As much as you want to, you can't take God out of that. And to be able to recognize that and acknowledge that, I think is so vastly important for us that we look towards, um, towards God as, as uh, redeemer, as, as savior, as, um, as reconciler, uh, all of these, these things uh, wrapped up in the, in the Trinity um, that we, we should like David gird our loins and be dancing um, for that. I'm not gonna dance for you today. You're welcome. Uh, but, but I will say um, it, it's, it's worth exploring uh, in your, in, in your uh, faith journey. Uh, where, where is God made manifest to you? Um, I hope and I pray that uh, this space that we have, this beautiful tool that we use to come and worship, is, is one of those places where you, where you feel God manifest. Uh, not that God, like the Holy of Holies, resides here. Um, uh, I wouldn't say that God doesn't reside here. I'm just saying that when the place is empty and the lights are turned off, it doesn't feel like God resides here until the people come in and the people come back and the people uh, join in fellowship. Then God um, seems manifest in here. And all of these signs and symbols that are all around us, the candles, the altar, the windows, uh, the, the, even the pews, the, the pipe organ, the music, uh, the liturgy of, of the word and the liturgy of the sacrament, 
all are meant to be iconic and push us towards. Even the cross is meant to be iconic and push us towards, our eyes towards, uh, beyond itself and towards, uh, and through it towards God, magnifying God's uh, love. And David knew this. He knew that the Ark of the Covenant was that type of instrument to bring people into a place where they knew God was there to bless them. God is here to bless you. God wants to bless you. Um, uh, so I, I ask this question. I'm going to leave it hanging with you today, guys. Um, where is God manifest to you? Email me. Let me know. My, my, uh, my email address is on the back of the bulletin. Email me and uh, give me a response. Where is God manifest for you? Uh, it doesn't have to be our worship space. It, it doesn't have to be in Dallas. Uh, it might be someplace that you've encountered uh, Christ. I know uh, for a lot of us that went on the uh, pilgrimage to Israel, uh, a lot of us felt God's presence in, in several places, the Temple Mount, um, in, in Bethlehem, uh, in the people that we encountered there, in so many places. Everybody uh, that, you, that you talked to that went on the trip will tell you a different spot where they felt God uh, manifest. And so um, f- for you, I- I'll leave you with that question, where do you feel God manifest? And I hope that once you identify that, that you'll find the joy that David found um, and, and will... Uh, dance in your spirit will dance uh, like David giving it is all in uh, for the glory of God um, it, it's all uh, to magnify the majesty and the the the, uh, the love of God in our lives so I leave that with you today um, read second Samuel it's a great read first five chapters really um, really uh, intriguing good to get through hard names to get but they're fine it's good you'll learn a lot about uh, about Saul's family. You'll learn a lot about the dynamic, the, the family dynamic there. You'll learn a lot about David's family and the dynamic there. And when you get to six, you really see King David really uh, take off on his own. So it's worth the read. Second Samuel, I'll give it to you. And look for God. Find out where God is manifest for you this week. Amen. I speak to you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.